Hey, so we've talked about how to start a bag business, what you need to charge for your products. One of the things that I've kind of glossed over and haven't really covered in detail yet is how to determine your manufacturing cost. What did it cost you to make this bag? This beautiful bag that I'm holding here that has been collecting dust on my shop for nearly two months now. It's fine. I'm not bitter or anything. So let's go through my process of figuring this out because it, you'll find it's actually pretty simple. First, a disclaimer. I do not have an MBA. I did not go to Duke University and spend way too much money on a degree I would never use. Sorry. Okay. In all seriousness, uh, I just have a whole lot of years of spending way too much money on my hobbies and then selling things to make up for the fact that I've spent too much money on my hobbies. With that in mind, let's hop right into those three core principles. So what are those core principles? So you have three that you need to be aware of when determining your manufacturing costs. There is the Cost of materials, which is going to be the primary thing we're going to discuss in this video. The cost of labor, meaning your time or the time of other individuals to produce said product. And three, handling. I'm not talking about shipping, I'm talking about handling. You bought an envelope, great. Are you considering that in the cost of your product? Probably not. Ask me how I know. So let's roll into that first principle, which is the cost of your materials, because that's actually like the bulk of the problem you're gonna be dealing with and trying to calculate this stuff out. Breaking this down into something that is measurable chunks that you can then determine the total cost of, is actually a lot easier than you would think. Typically what I do is I go material by material, determine how much I spent to purchase that piece of, of whatever it was, whether it be the fabric, the zipper, even the zipper pull or the D-rings. I put all of that down in a spreadsheet and I divide it by however many uh, I had purchased and determine what the individual cost is. So then I can take that information and I can kind of tally up what it is was used in that particular product, say this bag, which is, I'm gonna actually just walk you through how I'm doing all of it. So you can see everything and then it determines what the total cost to manufacture is. Um, and then from there, that's when you can determine like the rest, like, okay, I spent hypothetically $10 to make said bag, how much should I charge so that it was worth my time, the effort, and I make back the cost that went into it? See, that's a lot of that. That's a thing that a lot of people miss is they'll they'll spend ten bucks to make a thing and then turn around and sell it for fifteen or twenty. And yeah, so basic economics. Um, if you have a high demand for a product, because let's say if I sold this for twenty dollars, I'd probably be in high demand but then I would probably slowly go completely freaking bonkers and have a lot of life regrets. So that's why I charge more for them so I can kind of stemmy the demand and keep a steady supply going. So I don't, you know, hit the bottle while I'm sewing this thing. So let's walk through my super duper cool uh, spreadsheet tactics so you can see what it is that I do to determine the manufacturing costs. Okay, I'm just gonna hide up in the corner here. So you have like a face to the voice. Also, it covers my name up in Excel. So this is just Microsoft Excel. You don't have to use Excel. There's free applications that are out there. You can use Google. Um, Google has like their own like spreadsheet thing. The idea is that you had just have something that kind of do the math for you. Um, I don't know if you're like me and like math is just not your strong point, but this is typically what I will use. And it's it's nothing, you know, super fancy. Basically, let's start with the fabric. So we're gonna do exterior fabric like this, and we'll just, uh, we're gonna expand this along so we can see. And I, let's say I we're gonna do yard increments. So I spent $20 a yard. This is a custom fabric. There's a whole buttload of topics on that we will not dive into with this particular video I did already in a seam ripping video if you want to go check that out um, so that's how much per yard I did this is like per unit 
So I'll actually take this material here and we'll move it down here. Um, so material name, um, unit cost. And we'll just bold that and make it look really awesome. It's good according to the thing. Okay, so there's our exterior fabric. Our lining fabric, I actually purchased for six bucks a yard. So the $6 a yard that I got is actually waterproof canvas, but I also purchased it in 10 yard increments. So I got it at a discount. So for you, you might be going, how the heck did you get Ottertech so cheaply? And it's because I bought a buttload of it all at once. Um, let's see, the other thing is zipper tape. So I, uh, I have purchased the zipper tape in the past from Amazon, um, and I believe it was a whopping $18. And that was for uh, several yards, several, several meters in, or yards of zipper tape. So it was pretty, pretty decent pricing. Um, and that's actually purple, purple zipper tape with rainbow which is nice. Now, the zipper pull that I'm using is custom. The zipper pull was 350. So it's important to note that some people will forget if you, you know, you want to make a cute bag, that's great. But remember that material cost, that's kind of a little bit of extra bling that you're putting on there. Um, my bag tag, my bag tag was a dollar. So custom uh, business tag. And that was, whoop, not a hundred, not a hundred. <laughs> um, that would make me Gucci. Um, now, I also have this custom strapping um, that I'm using. This webbing was by Alchemats, and it's a pastel rainbow. So we'll do custom webbing. Um, and I can't actually remember the cost. So just for hypothetical you know, just totally hypotheticals. We'll say it was ten dollars um, for the units that I got, which is probably right. I think I bought three yards of it, um, three to five. But that sounds that that's good for hype. We'll just go with that. the The idea is I'm walking you through how to do this, not if it's like accurate to when I built this. Built, yeah, when I constructed the bag. Um, and I don't, the one thing I don't count is rivets because they are just so cheap. It, it would be like, you know, charging for staples. It's just a little weird. So I kind of just, you know, hand wave that. I won't hand wave the hooks and the D-rings. So hooks, my hooks, uh, I only used one here um, and they were 50 cents each. Um, and then the D ring was 25 cents each. Again, I got those from Nova world on AliExpress. If you want a link, I'm going to put it in the description below so you can find that. I'm pretty much a wide open book when it comes to where I buy my tier rules and stuff. Cause I don't care about sharing. Sharing is caring. So that's really it in terms of my materials. But see, that's the base cost. I didn't use a yard of fabric on this. Absolutely not. Maybe a quarter yard, right? If that. So it, it's like, it's more like trying to, to, to understand like, what is your actual usage pattern? So here are the materials, like the base material cost. So let's make a section um, that is uh, actual bag costs, just like this. Um, we'll also label it good. Um, so we want to basically say, okay, so we didn't use a whole yard. We may have used like an eighth. So let's imagine if we, if, if you will, you have a quarter yard of fabric, but then you only used about half of that. So if you think that's really only about an eighth of a yard. So we only need about an eighth of that. So if you were to take the uh, materials, uh, so you can go uh, B to, this is gonna end up being a lesson <laughs> times one divided by eight. But uh, so two fifty. I spent two dollars and fifty cents just for the exterior fabric. Same thing for the lining. 
I don't do the interior pocket on the Clematis, so that, you know, that's probably going to be the exact same thing. Um, I also didn't use any custom vinyls, anything like that. You'd want to calculate that in as well if you were to do that. Um, so again, we'll do B3 for that category, and we're going to multiply it by 1 divided by 8. 75 cents. That sounds pretty good. Zipper tape. Let's say, um, hmm, mm hmm, how do I want to do the zipper tape? I'm trying to think. It's like, okay, so let's say I bought, actually, I actually spent less on the zipper tape than I thought. Haha, <laughs> go me. Not that it really matters, but I spent $15 and it's 10 yards. So it might be helpful also to mark in in your uh you know your materials over here you can make this like a database if you want i i used to maintain a spreadsheet and i found that it was a little too difficult to maintain because over time my prices would change as i restocked and it would shift a lot so i kind of just like normalize things um and i go to update it like, like maybe once a year um, in February after um, the markets come back from Chinese New Year. To more easily help us calculate the amount of the zipper tape that we used, um, since this is already in like a 10 yard increment, um, as opposed to the fabrics, which are broken down to like one yard increments, we need to figure out the per yard cost of the zipper tape. So we are going to take that $15 that is in B4, and we're going to divide it by 10 because that basically ends up being $1.50 per yard. So now we're going to have like our per yard breakdown of this, and that'll be a lot easier to work with. So just for brevity's sake, we're just going to say I used a third of a yard. So now we're going to go back here and we're going to take it. Now this is going to be C4 not to be confused with um, danger Play-Doh. And we're going to divide it by, or actually, mm, mm, yeah, no, multiply it. Oh, jeez, that was not what I wanted to do. Oh, that was fun. We're going <laughs> to, no, we're going to multiply it <laughs> by one third. <laughs> <laughs> which is actually a lot more than I thought, but you know, round up for error. It's a buck. So that one, that one's a little harder to kind of break down. Um, so zipper pool, uh, we're just going to straight up transfer that one over. Same thing for, uh, the, uh, business tag. I do, I do factor that in if it was less than a dollar, maybe, but like, once you factored in the shipping from China, you know, you kind of have to roll that into your total cost. That that really hurts. Um, as an example, and this might be a little bit of a tangent, but when if you are sourcing your own fabric, let's let's say, you know, you did find a supplier um, on Alibaba and you were like, Woo, I paid six bucks for a yard of that of that canvas. Well, how much did you pay to have it shipped? Because I can tell you, it was not $6 in the end. It was probably closer to $18 to $20, which sucks. Um, so shipping right now is very out of control. And that's something you got to consider, unfortunately. So bear that in mind going forward. Um, for the custom webbing, um, that was 10 bucks uh, for the three yards. I probably used half of a yard. Um, so we're going to take that ten, that uh, that value um, doing whoop, boop, boop, doing the same thing that we did before. Um, and we're going to take B7 and we're going to divide it by three. So that's how much. You know, that's about how much we use. I probably only used maybe a quarter of a yard, maybe ish. Actually, I probably should do the same for the zipper. If anybody is like, what the heck is going on? Uh, this is just my brain on drugs. Uh, apparently, apparently that is something that Excel doesn't like. So we'll just go with that. We'll just, we'll just go with that. Okay. So now we're going to take C7. And, and do do that again. One, two, three, four. 
There we go. I don't know why this had an issue with that, but sure. Thanks. Um, and we'll just straight up transfer over uh, B8 for the hook um, and B9 for uh, the D ring. Um, you can totally do this with pencil and paper, by the way. You don't have to do this. Um, I have and this is kind of a disability awareness moment. I have dyscalculia, which is a little weird for a software engineer, but I've never needed the math. Um, I, I have trouble um, visualizing numbers and, and uh, how they interact. I can't visualize math problems very well, so I have to use tools like Excel or even just a basic calculator on my phone um, to do very basic things. So now that I've gotten that disability thing out of the way, uh, what we're going to do now is add all of this up. So we're going to sum um, D2 colon, which means through and including D9. And you can see it in here. It'll visualize it summing it all up. If you want to sum up different things, you, I think you can actually like click and drag or, you know, uh, control click or shift click certain areas if you want. I'm just doing the summation. Um, and that actually gives me, which I was about right, $10, um, my total manufacturing cost uh, for this wristlet. So now that we know how much it costs in our materials, what about labor? How much do you pay yourself per hour to sew the thing or just make the thing? This kind of is a general purpose business video. Um, for me personally, and I know a lot of people are going to like go in the comments and that's fine. Everybody has their own way of doing things. I just do materials times three and I will round up um, if I need to. Um, or sometimes I will tack on a little extra if it's a super complex bag. What I can tell you right now, this ain't complex. I can whip one of these bad boys out like in a half hour. Um, and I can actually like assembly line them pretty easily. Um, and I just, I'm just, you know, used to making them. So for me, I don't see the point in tacking on, you know, 15, 20 bucks an hour to pay myself for this because it just, it works out correctly for me in my personal business situation to do cost materials times three. So 30 bucks. Um, and now if I had added vinyl, it would be 35. So that's just how I kind of, you know, work through those things. Is this the actual cost of what's listed on my website? No. The numbers that I listed are just like, woo. I'm just coming up with numbers so I can walk you through the process of it and you can see it and do it on your own. I can't say if those numbers are accurate anymore or not, but there we go. So for labor, um, really up to you. If it's a super huge product that requires um, a lot of additional time, wear and tear on your machines, then yeah, you probably want to try to figure out for yourself, um, and it's a very personal decision as to what you want to charge per hour for that. Um, there is no one that can tell you this is what you need to charge. It's totally, I meant it when I said it was personal. Um, some people think $10 an hour is a good overhead to charge for themselves and the work that they do. Some people want to charge 20 bucks an hour or 30 bucks because it's different. You know, like, top, like uh, let's say, stippling a quilt. Doing, doing the heavy quilting work on the long arm, that takes a lot of effort. Um, and I, I can't even begin to imagine how much I would charge for something like that. So again, like you'll, you'll have to sit down and reflect with yourself if the cost of materials times three is just not working out for you or not. Okay, last thing, handling. I'm not talking about the shipping. I'm talking about the handling, the cute crap, the packaging. The cute business cards that are upside down, but awesome. But then you forgot you had them until you had to do a video for YouTube. It's true. Honestly, I, I always forget to put those in. I need to talk about cute packaging in a completely different video and then hold myself accountable. Um, it's also the special cotton for fountain pens cards that you get to say thank you. I do use these. I do. Dang it. 
Um, I, I like to write thank you notes to people who support my horrible sewing habits. Um, but this is kind of more important is the, the actual like, materials and stuff that you're using. Don't charge somebody for a thank you card for crying out loud. But, um, in all seriousness, usually you'll go to, to like charge shipping and you'll totally forget, oh, it cost me a dollar for this or, or it cost me, you know, $2 for the box that I had to get. Um, so don't forget to do this and, and depending on what application you're using to sell your products or, or even if, you know, you're, you're just, you know, selling, um, casually online, um, you'll, you'll want to roll this into the cost of the item or, um, I use Shopify. I can actually designate presets for the different kinds of packaging that I use. And when I set it, it, it knows to add this on for the cost of the item. Um, and then kind of roll that into the shipping cost for the item. Uh, sometimes it can be a little funky. It, it'll, it'll come up with like some really weird numbers. So I'm pretty careful about that, but, um, I tend to just think in my head, okay, so I can probably ship the wristlet safely in this. I do wrap things additionally in, um, crinkle paper. It's a special paper you can get. You pull it apart and it's like, woo, it's like bubble wrap, only it doesn't destroy the planet. <laughs> it just kills trees. Oh, that's not much better. But anyway, um, so where where was I? Right. So that's basically it. Just the three things that you need to remember. Your cost of materials, the cost of labor, and the cost of handling. And once you get those three things all rolled up and tightened up, you can see how you feel about that price if you need to raise it lower it, um, kind of consider like the demand on something like, oh, I could see this going really well because such and such is super popular right now. Maybe I should judge a little more, you know, uh, but it, it does help you get a baseline. And I really hope that breaking down the materials used in the product um, and evaluating the overall cost um, versus what you actually use, specifically with fabric, um, right. So like breaking that down. So that you're like, well, I didn't use an entire yard. Why would I charge 20 bucks for the yard? Uh, if you only use like an eighth of it. Um, I really hope that helped you. Please let me know your strategies, uh, down below in the comments, like subscribe, hit a bell, blah, 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 all that crap people say in the, in the videos. Goodbye.